Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm Coleman Hodges. We're sitting down with Olympic champion Nathan Adrian. Nathan, first of all, I want to ask, when are you going to grow your hair out? When are you just going to oh. let it? And, <laughs> like and you, back on? when you were in Berkeley? Oh, yeah. Yeah, just I don't know flowing. if I, uh, I, I don't know if I'll ever be super long and flowing, but it is kind of deceivingly long right now. Like, it, it can go down to about my nose. It's oh, wow. kind of hidden. I'm, I am kind of at the... Um, you know, do it, do it or do not stage where it's like, do I put, do I push through that awkward right. um, phase? But I don't know. I was, I was, I will say I was temporarily inspired uh, after watching like the David Beckham uh, documentary on Netflix. Cause I mean, I, he just like kept coming up with cool hair, hairstyles, but um, I don't think that truly long hair. I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, I don't feel like you would have, um, I didn't think you were going to grow it out. <laughs> it's not a good look for me, man. My my hair naturally just kind of, it really just puffs out like a lot. So uh, the sides, the, the awkward yeah. stage of the sides, yeah. I mean, it might have to be like a wintertime beanie from like December 1st to March type thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it's, it's hard, but you know, when you push past it, it can be cool. Any, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Nathan, it's, it's great to sit down with you again. It's so great to see you. We have a we have a hundred freestyle world record. Uh yes, 46.80 by Panzan Lee, who I learned is only 19. I did not realize that. <laughs> Neither did I. I actually didn't do thank you. That was that's information for me right now. <laughs> Seriously. Uh so if, yeah, for all our listeners who didn't know that, Panzan Lee 19, he was 4680 in the 100 free, out 22 2, uh, mm -hmm. leading off the 400 free relay. Um, what were your thoughts on this world record? You are, you know, you are, you have a PhD in the, in the uh, hundred meter freestyle. Uh, and so, you know, this event front and back, what were your initial reactions to this swim? Yeah. I mean, as, as with all information, I mean, it's pretty dated at this point, right? Um, <laughs> like it, it is, it is mind blowing. I was, I was just talking, um, and it, it feels like this has all been like predicted mathematically, like any, like the stats professors are all just like, this is what's going to happen with like a 90% probability. And all of us are like, oh my gosh, that'd be crazy. And then like, here it is. And it's actually happening. And I'm saying, oh my gosh, that would be crazy. Um, so, I mean, the ability to go out that fast and like look the way that he, he did doing it is, is something that I'd you know, uh, 10 years ago, I'm not sure I would have like, you, you could have shown me that race 10 years ago without the clock. And I'd be like, Oh, wow, cool. That's, that's a nice swim. I would have had no idea how just how fast it was. I, I mean, I, I'm curious what it looks like in person, right? Is it one of those things where you have to like, you see your, your, uh, your stopwatch to believe it? Or is it like, Oh, that does actually look that fast as they're moving through the water? Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, uh, again, yeah. Going out in 22, two, that is most people's best times in a 53, yeah. you know, it's like, if you're <clears throat> that that's yeah, it's a lot of speed. Uh, and then to be able to back it up <laughs> with, with a 20, with a 24, uh, is a little mind numbing. Um, are, are you amazed or surprised at all that it took this long for someone to break Cielo's record? And then that record didn't even last two years. No, because I think once you get to that, to that point, I mean, if it, just the way that it, it works, it felt like, um, in 2009, there was all, everything was, every world record was some level of an outlier. Right. Um, and then just everybody was just inching closer, inching closer, inching closer, inching closer, inching closer until it was the kind of the whole field was closer to that world record and then it's kind of back to its normal path where it's just like continued progress um so no 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 once it's once it's broken i mean that's that is when people are inspired that's when people know what they have to do and i think that's just kind of the intangible um factor that makes swimming so cool right now is that uh we still just don't know what that ceiling is uh it, and I think that belief that, hey, I need to go this much faster um, is this placebo effect in your brain that like just unlocks capabilities beyond um, what you otherwise think you could have done. Um, I, I really do believe that, uh, that that is one of one of the reasons why I think we will continue to see like faster and faster swimming. 
Um, just because as you know, imagine being a like, what did you think was fast in a hundred yard freestyle when you were 15 years old? Mm. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. What do you think? 45? Yes, I thought 45 maybe? was insanely fast. At yeah, years old. <laughs> right. And now, and now you ask a 15 year old what a fast time is, and they're talking about going 42s, right? So they're starting to dream and they're starting to believe. Um, and then when they uh, are starting to measure themselves up against that, right? We're talking about we're talking about over speed today. We're going, you know, so and so's best time 100 freestyle. We're going to break it down into 25s, and they know they need to go. 11.0, 10.5, something like that. And, and it just like, once you do it, you believe it. And then, and then, you know, that kind of manifests itself. I think it really like kind of strangely existential or whatever, but like it manifests itself in your body and it, uh, it just unlocks capabilities. I think that are, that are beyond what you and I believe when we thought that 45 was super fast. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, w without a doubt, I, so now I have to ask, when what what do you think will be the next record in the hundred freestyle that that people that will be around for a long time that will be, will be around for five plus years i don't know man i mean i don't think anybody's established themselves an outlier quite yet i mean but i mean with uh with david and then with uh with pan now like they might be because they're still so young. And I mean, we, I, yeah, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to jinx anything, but Jack has been having an incredible, uh, he's, he's having a really, he's, he's, he's a, he's a sneaker wave right now, man. He's, he's coming up exactly in the right position. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see what, it, what he can do, whether it's breaking a world record, um, or just going out there and, and representing Team USA at the highest level. Um, I, yeah, I, w I will say that I, um, I would have predicted that these world records don't happen at the major international competition in the Hunter Free Final. Um, I don't think pools have figured out how to eliminate the wave well enough to uh, to manage that yet. Um, where they, these guys are just too big and too fast, and when you're moving that fast through the water, um, even if you can kick out under the underneath that wave, you're still going to either be like you know, people are going to be trying to catch a draft or, um, or, or that's just going to be a bunch of, a bunch of turbulence there. Maybe if they can throw in double lane lines or something, I think that's illegal in international competition. Um, <laughs> but no, the, these, these world records, I think in the hundred are going to continue to ha kind of happen at these places where you can, um, get out far enough in front of the field that you don't have to deal with those other issues. Yeah. I, and so I, maybe I, I mean how cool, maybe they should do like little like time trials or something. I, I don't know, <laughs> like be a bit, like to give people chances to to break the world records in in the hundred. I, and I think the hundred is specifically the event with the biggest issue. Right, and I feel like it's so different leading off a relay versus the individual final as well, as you said. Mm -hmm. Right, I mean, there's it's a different kind of pressure. People are at different places in the meet, like we always kind of saw Caleb, for example, move through the meet and get faster from the, the mm -hmm. lead off to the mm -hmm. individual final. But then obviously pe more other people are more fresh, like Pan just did it leading off this relay. So it's interesting, the, all, all the taking all those little factors into account into what what makes what makes the record recipe. Totally. And as we speak, I mean, with the 100 free final hasn't gone, so I might totally eat my own words there, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I mean, he obviously can get out fast, uh, as we saw before. He was 22-5, I think, today in the semi. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so it's like he, he, knows, he knows how to play that game, but I'm glad you mentioned Jack Alexi because I was going to ask you, he's... He's having a great season so far. Uh, he was just 48-1 at a, some long course swimming event uh, this month. What What is it with Cal and huge guys in the 100 freestyle? <laughs> Do you have to be 6'7 and in Berkeley to, to, to be on this 100 free that's, level? That's the, that's the requirement. Yeah, they have, a special, <laughs> uh, they have a special doorway for you to walk through if, uh, if you're tall and you can swim the 100 free. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean Bjorn's even taller. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, man. I mean, it's it, it's something special when you get uh, as as many fast guys um, as as Cal has right now to all be in the water training together. So it, it is. It, it keeps them all like it keeps them all humble uh, because you got to be on top of it in order to uh, to to win the day, whatever whatever that might mean for for them. And it is uh, it w- when you get those guys, it, it makes not that. <laughs> I don't. I don't want this to be perceived, uh, in, you know, the the wrong way. But it makes Dave's job in a, in some ways, and David Marsh's job a little easier because they are able. That competitive nature comes out, um, so they are and, and they're constantly reminded um, of like, hey, but like, what was good enough last year isn't good enough this year. Um, I got to figure out what I what I got to do, and if it's staying staying later, or working on nutrition, making sure they're getting proper sleep. Um, yeah, there's definitely that level of accountability when you have a top level training group like that is just something very, very special. Do you feel like, uh, you had that when you were at Cal, just that, that level of competition, uh, within each practice? I did. Uh, I did. And it would, it would, I mean, I was at Cal for a long time. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, I came in in 2006, small fish into a big pond and it was me chasing like all the time, all the time, all the time, chasing Dewey. Um, you know, we had a lot of, uh, of Olympians, Olympic medalists. I mean, we had uh, Miller Ad was still there. We called him Mike back in the day. Um, and uh, yeah, so there was, there was a lot of competition in practice every day. And that is, I mean, that, that was something that I just, I, I needed. I I think that I was a little stagnant my my, my senior year in high school because I like I lost that because of my main training partner had had gone away, um, and then when I got it back, it was just like something magical. Just every day, there was something to look forward to, looking forward to compete, looking looking forward to like measuring yourself, seeing how how well you can do. Yeah, and I always forget you you took an Olympic redshirt year, right? Mm-hmm. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I always forget that. And I think that's so such an interesting thing, especially because of then how your Olympic trials and Olympics went after that. Um, what do you feel like you got out of that year? You know, just we're in an Olympic year now. We have a lot of red shirts. Um, what went into that decision for you? And what do you feel like you got out of it? Well, at the time, you know, Mike Bottom was my coach and I had gone to Cal because Mike was uh, Mike was coaching the sprinters there. And I was I was really inspired. And this is at the time where there's just like two totally different paradigms. It was like a high school paradigm. You just pound out a bunch of yardage and then all of a sudden the switch flips and all, you can be a you know sprinter and you can lift weights and train fast, that kind of thing. Um, so I was very excited about it. Um, and when Mike decided to go down there, he just gave me the opportunity. I, I thought um, even just taking into the consideration all the information that I had at that time, it was, hey, like, this is an opportunity that I may or may not ever get. Like, I was 18 going on 19, and um, I got to live for a full year like a professional athlete. And if I made the team, like maybe we continue this trajectory and then get to continue that and actually live the professional athlete like after NCAAs was done. Um, but I thought it would be a really great experience. But then on top of that, it could, you know, also put me in a good position to make the Olympic team. Um, and, and it did end up working out. Um, so yeah, that, that was, uh, that was, that was great. That was, that was really great for me. Um, obviously that, that year in retrospect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, I feel like that's a cool factoid uh, that, again, I, I don't think I knew that for a long time, but yeah. Um, and then obviously, you know, Pan Pan breaks this world record at a world championships that, you know, in, in one regard, isn't supposed to be happening, right? We don't normally have this February pre-Olympic world championships. Um, you know, if, if, if you were a swimmer today, how would you approach the decision of going to a world championships like this or, or not in an Olympic year in February? Great question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, great question. I think that's um, that actually kind of uh, something I lean on for that. It's actually looking back at that 2008 experience. Um, and, and when I do camps and clinics and things, I talk about it a lot in that um, I think there was like a world championship trials short course in Atlanta in December or something of 2007 and it qualified you for short course world championships. I was having in like April and like, keep in mind at this time, like short course world championships wasn't even elevated to the level that it is now. 
Um, and then it's in the Olympic year in April. <laughs> Most people were not attending this <laughs> world championships. Um, but for me, it was just like this incredible opportunity to experience what it was like to be on Team USA, like on the big team. I had been on, uh, you know, national junior teams before, uh, but this is my my first time, you know, on, on the uh, on the A team or whatever it might be. Um, and then going internationally, I swam in an arena for the first time. So like when I got to Olympic trials and they were messing with the lights and fireworks and stuff was going on, like it, it was really cool, but it wasn't like, you know, my jaw wasn't on the floor because it wasn't my first time doing it. Um, and then I did get to experience, um, I, I experienced a level of success there that was awesome. I won the hundred free out of lane eight. Um, and, and my big joke is that like, I, I got to call myself a world champion. Uh, but like no one understood that it was really just like the short course worlds at that point. Like, again, I'm not trying to like take that away from anybody who's just a short course world championship world champion now. But uh, back then, it truly wasn't as much of an accomplishment as it, <laughs> as it sounds like. Uh, so I was I was riding high going into trials, and and you know as, as a lot of us know, like um, confidence is really important to to swimming fast. So uh, that was that was the right decision for me. Um, now I, I you know towards the end of my career i i don't think i would have probably gone because i i had a, a level of, of confidence that i i would have needed or felt that i needed necessary to go into olympic trials and then go to the olympics um and if i needed competition uh I, I could have you know stayed domestic to uh to really not take out a full like two i, I mean that's a, that's a I, I always had a lot of issues with jet lag and if i wanted to travel anywhere and compete i really wanted to give myself a shot of competing at the highest level um so we're talking about a really difficult time change to manage um going there and then coming back you're going to have a difficult time change to manage we're talking like two three Three and a half weeks out of your typical like training rhythm um so it would have had to have been a conversation between dave and i um whether or not we felt like this was something important um for you know ultimately what we want to achieve at the end of the season agreed i yeah and a, a lot of athletes have obviously chosen different ways for different reasons and it's kind of mm -hmm. fun to see that just everyone's rationale and then how it's played out um, whether they're going or not, I think we've seen a lot of veterans opt to not go. And then a lot of younger swimmers or a lot of the swimmers who are on USA's roster specifically are in that younger category or, or less experienced on the national team category. Um, which, which again, makes a lot of sense. I, I really liked Lily King's answer when I asked her about this, she was like, I don't want to find out that three eight day meets in six months is too many five months before, you know, at the Olymp on day five of the Olympic games. <laughs> that is a, that is a beautiful, well thought out response. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. I, I, I also feel like, you know, you mentioned it's, it's two and a half to three and a half weeks out of your training rhythm, but it's also just an eight day meet is such a different emotional and mental experience than a, even like a four and a half day conference championships that a lot of these college swimmers might be racing at instead. Oh man. I mean, it is, it is something that, um, the top swimmers are going to lock into their mentality regardless of whatever physiological like level that they're ready to perform at. Like when you're at world championships, it is still world championships. Okay. And you see that and you see people going out and competing and you're going to the ready room and you're going, you're wearing the flag on your head. Um, and then you're also experiencing those, um, the, the podiums and, and watching, you know, people, the, the national anthem, uh, and the flags getting raised. It is, it is a really emotionally like charged to meet because like, it, it's hard. Like if I would have gone not ready to go, it would have taken a lot out of me. It's not, it, 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 right. Like for a lot of different reasons. So it's one of those, it's, a, it's an interesting mind game man it's an interesting <laughs> mind game that's that's all <laughs> it, uh, yeah i agree um so it's it's been it's it's fun as a swimming fan to kind of sit back and watch what's happening you know we we get it we get a world record on day one um a, and a, a very you know pretty significant one at that but and then we get a lot of fast swimming out of it but yeah again it'll be i think it'll be just as interesting to see how these athletes who have gone and competed continue throughout their season 
and go through their trials if they do that and, and then on to the Olympics as well. Yeah, I think so. And I think, I mean, I think that like in, in some ways, like I'm glad they did it in some ways. Cause like a February meet is kind of fun. Like, right. Like, but the conference championships and NCAAs are also, also fun, but like talking about this, talking about world records right now, like this is, this is cool. This is cool to be a swim, uh, a, a swim fan, um, in, in 2024. Uh, I, I second that for sure. Uh, so speaking of, um, conference championships, NC2A championships, uh, Mm -hmm. I think on the men's side, Cal ASU is, is one of the most exciting matchups we've seen in a long time. I don't, to me, there's not a clear favorite at this point. Um, and heading into NC2As, I'm curious what you feel, um, Cal's advantage is when they go to an NC2A meet because they, they always have this, they always perform at that meet, you know, this is like Durden's bread and butter. It's a secret (laughs) sauce. Uh, Like what, how do you feel like they're able to do that? Reveal all the trade secrets. (laughs) Yeah. You're asking a lot, man. Um, You know, I, I don't have, I don't have an answer for you, but what I will say is that when I came back to school after, um, after that Olympic waiver is when we started slotting into this paradigm of Cal always performing at NCs. Um, and I think after like the first year was like, Hey, this is cool. And then after the second year, it was like, Oh, that was, you know, sweet. This is, this is still really fun. And after the third year, it's like, this is just what we do. You know, like, and, and that is part of, that is part of what we do. And that, you know, don't like, Dave, Dave knows what he's doing, man. <laughs> uh, you know, anybody that swam for him or anybody that that's met him knows, knows that, um, it, 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 it's not an accident, but it is, it is what we do, uh, Matt Cal. And, um, it's a fun time walking into a meet seeing this heat sheet and then just watching all your friends and your teammates just crush their times. <laughs> it's, it's a, it is a good time. You see what it does in terms of energy for Dave on the sideline. You see what it does for the energy in terms of the Cal fans on the sideline. Um, you see what it does for the swimmers on the sideline. It is a fun time uh, for, for those days in, in March at NCAAs for, uh, for Cal. I'm not saying, well, I don't know how easy or hard it is for, for Dave to have built that. And uh, uh, maybe, you know, obviously every team probably doesn't have this opportunity. I'm a little surprised that more teams haven't caught on. <laughs> this is what I'll say, you know? I mean, I think I think when the Texas men were winning championships, they obviously were able to kind of do that. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's like, well, the the formula seems to be there. Why why aren't we seeing more people do this? I think you need to go do some more uh, practice and pancakes at Cal, my man. <laughs> you, I mean, it's a special place. Like there is, and and unfortunately, I don't think it comes across on camera because when you show it on camera, I feel it because I know I've been there and I have been mm-hmm. on deck and I have felt the energy. Like, can you speak to that a little bit? Right, like. There is something special about being there. And, um, and I don't feel it everywhere I go. And maybe it's, it's just the like super biased Cal fan in me. Um, but there it's, uh, it, it is, it's, uh, it's inspiring for me to go. Right. And like, for some, I mean, I swam professionally, I swam at Cal. Oh my gosh, 15 years. And I still just like, I go and I'm inspired when I'm there. It can even be like a recovery day, but like just seeing the intentionality behind everything that they're doing um, and then watching Dave and David Marsh work together um, in in like perfect symphony because like they are two completely different people, uh, but they can totally like mesh and and get really special things done. Uh, yeah, it, it, <laughs> to, to have those two on deck together kind of feels like a cheat code to me, but it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, totally, you know, totally. it's awesome left to out, see. A, B, A, B, left out, upright or something. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
Um, Nathan, what's your deal lately? Are you swimming? Are you staying in shape? Are you are you getting oh, ready man. for the fifty freestyle? You're Olympic asking trials? me at a bad time because I was really good <laughs> about being consistently swimming for um, man like weeks there. Uh, but like our uh, the pool that I was a member of, uh, they just went down for resurfacing, and then our pool. I'm looking at it right now; it is about 55 degrees. And despite my best efforts, I cannot get over the headache. Um, it just hurts too bad. <laughs> I can I can be in the water. I you know I can do an ice bath for for you know five ten minutes or whatever it is. But the second you get in, I get my head in and I'm moving. Man, that uh, hats off to to those bay swimmers. Uh, you're you're doing. I I don't know what it is about it, but. I, time breaking through that barrier wow so how about you so you'll be Pullman, are you swimming are we going to see you in the middle of the day at olympic trials listen uh if you don't know in 2016 for listeners out there in 2016 <laughs> there was this the media swim is this is this coveted event where you write it's a 50 long course i guess you can do whatever stroke you want but you write down what time you're gonna go and then you swim a 50 and then whoever gets the closest to their predicted time won an omega watch <clears throat> so i in 21 2021 trials it was obviously we were in the height of the pandemic and so they didn't have it but if they have a media swim I might, I might just have to go win an Omega watch, you know, <clears throat> I kind of want to sign up for that one. Let me know if you have an extra, let me know if swim swim has an extra, uh, a media credential and I can get on that. <laughs> Seriously, Nathan, Adrian in the media swim. I, you would be <laughs> such an outlier. <laughs> it's not about who's going the fastest though. It's about predicting their time. And right now I have no idea. I know, but you're six, eight. <laughs> <laughs> And no, no one in the media is over five ten. <laughs> but what would you? Right. What you, would know, you I still get. I still get that a lot. I still get. Oh my gosh, you guys are so much taller in person. I'm like, well, that's because everybody, uh, everybody on the live TV interviews, they're standing on Apple boxes. They don't. <laughs> under, people don't understand. People don't get it. It doesn't come through on the screen. If it you were not. Gonna, if you swam a fifty long course freestyle right now, what would you? What what would you, what time would you put down for your to win an Omega watch? Ooh, what right now, I told you I have now? not been in the water in a while. I, I I think I could I think I could pop the Olympic, the trials cut. I don't think I could go too much faster than it. What is the trials cut? It's like a three zero or two nine or something, right? That would be my guess. Um, yeah, I, I think I get. Well, are we we suiting up? Yeah, yeah. You can okay, suit up. okay, suiting up, getting a wedge wedge uh, block going. Yeah, I could I could go twenty two mid to high. I think I might have to, a lot of caffeine though. A lot of caffeine would be involved, <laughs> and then. I'm giving a lot. I'm I'm putting a lot of like uh, stipulations on, or uh, <laughs> like a, a lot of conditions on this one. I yeah. need a couple of days of really good night's sleep. Um, <laughs> so with, yeah, so you fly to Omaha without children. Yeah, <laughs> right. You 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 sleep in a hotel. You uh, ca caffeinate. Uh, yeah. How many cups of coffee is that? How much? How do you caffeinate now with two kids? What's your oh, daily intake? If it has caffeine, I I put it in my body. <laughs> Do you, are you like? <laughs> What's my daily intake, man? I don't. Yeah. I mean, it's probably like five hundred milligrams at, uh, regularly. Like venti is not a, not is not scary to me anymore. <laughs> it used to be, and I would like to get back to the point where it is again. Uh, but now it's like kind of need it. <clears throat> yeah, that that just gets the day started. <laughs> That's just normal. <laughs> That's great. Um, <laughs> well, Nathan, thank you for your time. It's always great catching up with you. Uh, yeah, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. It is good to catch up with you. It is good to uh, to talk a little bit swimming. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Last question. Uh, we saw a four hundred free relay. We saw China go three eleven zero to win this. Um, to to win in Doha. U.S., China, Great Britain, Italy. Who's taking gold in Paris? <clears throat> well, I mean, I'm always gonna, I'm always gonna take USA every time, every time. <laughs> we've been in situations like this before, and we've come out ahead sometimes. And we've, you know, I was on a situation where we got silver in London, but like mm -hmm. it was the same, 
it was the same kind of deal. Most people thought we were going to get fourth, <laughs> right? That's just like what you do at Team USA is you like have high expectations and you 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 go and perform and you fight for it and wish we would have gotten gold, but I'm still really proud of that silver. <laughs> I mean, it really, tr truly, it was like, it, it's, it was, it was a really special relay to be on. That's, that's that just because of the expectations that people had versus the expectations that you had on yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. The expectations that people had, um, they just really counted us out. And the way that we reacted to it was like, I, I, I think, and I, I don't want to speak for the others on, on the relay was just kind of ignoring the noise and then going about our process and executing on what we could execute on. Um, and yeah, like I said, we would like to have gold, but like, we weren't, we weren't scared to go out and fight. Right. And that's, that's what I think the coolest thing about the Olympics is. Um, <laughs> and that's like, you know, and even for me, when I, when I look back, they look back when I look at like the video of, um, of the 800 free recently at sectionals, like I, I saw Katie fight it, you know, and that is what in my mind makes her such a champion. Like I love, I love that. Nothing makes her give up. And, and that is like the, the, everything about being a champion right there. You're, you're talking about, you're talking about the 800 free, where uh where the summer went 8 11 and she went 8 17. Yep. <laughs> you watched that video i didn't watch the whole thing i, I watched like the last like 200. Mm -hmm. but that's because that's what i was looking for like and and like uh, it's she katie is such a special person and special athlete yeah that's <laughs> that makes my heart happy that you watched that video <laughs> <laughs> well thank you all for uh for give, make, giving access to it <laughs> um i like that the the 2012 men's four and free relay was you michael phelps colin jones and ryan lochte which i don't know if there is like a more star-studded relay in history <laughs> that's crazy it was a fun one man it was fun <clears throat> um that's so cool well <laughs> nathan thank you for your insight for your wisdom and for your service in swimming <laughs> That's all. Awesome. me, man. It was good to chat with you. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.